In this video, we're going to talk about something called first ionization energy, or sometimes just called ionization energy. Okay, This is the amount of energy required to remove an electron from a gaseous atom. So let's say, for instance, we have sodium, and we want to turn it into sodium ion. We have to add some energy to remove that electron, and that energy is called its ionization energy, the energy to ionize or turn sodium into sodium ion. It's easier to remove an electron from a larger atom because the electron's farther from the nucleus. So in a little atom, the electron's pretty close. In a bigger atom, the electron is farther away. So it's farther away from the nucleus, which is attracting it, so it's easier to remove it. So larger atoms have smaller ionization energies. The group trend, as you go down a group, remember atoms get bigger, therefore their ionization energy decreases. These electrons are farther from the nucleus, and we're going to say that they're better shielded from the nucleus, so they're easier to remove. Well, what does shielding mean? Let's say I've got my nucleus, and I'm trying to remove, remember we're trying to remove a valence electron, the electrons that are on the outside. Well, let's say this is in like the fifth energy level. Between it and the nucleus, there's a bunch of other electrons, okay? All these lines I'm drawing are just electrons. So there's all these electrons here, right? And what they're doing is they're shielding this outside electron or valence electron from the nucleus. It's making it harder for the nucleus to attract the valence electron because all these other electrons are in the way. So we say it's better shielded. The valence electron is better shielded from the nucleus, so it just makes it easier to remove it. The periodic trend. Remember, as we go across a period, atoms get smaller, so ionization energy gets bigger. So as we go down, ionization energy decreases, and as we go across, ionization energy increases. It does the opposite of what the atomic size does. This would be all wonderful if it weren't for the fact that there's a couple of exceptions that we want to learn. Okay, um, So we're going to look at beryllium and boron. If you can find those on the periodic table, you'll see that bor beryllium is helium 2s2 and boron is helium 2s2 2p1. So on the periodic table, beryllium comes first and then boron. So beryllium is a bigger atom, so you would think it would have a lower ionization energy, but as it turns out, it actually has a higher ionization energy. I'm going to try to explain why that is. When I remove an electron from beryllium to make it Be+, it becomes helium 2s1, right? I'm going to take one of these electrons away. When I remove an electron to turn boron into B+, it's going to take this electron away and become 2s2. Now remember when we said that full energy levels, or sublevels are the most stable. Half full is almost as good, and partially full, not so much. So in this case, we're going from full to half full. Okay, and in this case, we're going from partially full, okay, it's neither half full nor, nor completely full, to full. Okay, so in this go, we're going from really stable to not quite as stable. And here we're going from not very stable at all to very stable. So this situation here doesn't want to happen. Okay, so it requires a lot of energy. Okay, it takes a lot of energy to change it from full or stable to half full. In this case, this wants to happen. Okay, it's all happy about that. Right? It wants to go from partially full to full, so this requires less energy. And that is why, even though boron is a smaller atom, and you would think it has a higher ionization energy, it has a lower ionization energy. Now, just like this happens for beryllium and boron, if you look at the periodic table, it's also going to happen between magnesium and aluminum. Okay, and all of the rest of the group too. Okay. The other exception comes in then between nitrogen and oxygen. 
If you find nitrogen, you see it's helium 2s2, 2p3. Oxygen is helium 2s2, 2p4. So in order to turn this to N+, plus, we're going to take away one of these electrons and become 2s2, 2p2. Okay. We're going to take away one of these electrons to become 2s2, 2p3. Oops. Okay. So here we went from half full to partially full. Right? Because P is 6, so 3 and 2. So this one does not want to happen, right? It wants to, this is more stable, not so much. Over here, we're going from partially full to half full. Okay? This situation does want to happen. Okay? This wants to happen. So this requires less energy. So if you look at the periodic table, O is smaller than N, but it still has a lower ionization energy. And just like N and O, this will happen for P and S, and arsenic and selenium, and so forth and so forth, all the way down the line. Okay. So just to take a second to look at a graph, this is the graph you've already made of ionization energy versus atomic number. Right? You can see that on the top of each group, the thing with the highest ionization energy is the noble gas. Okay, noble gases require, have the highest ionization energy of anything. Okay, just like the trend says. Um, and then it kind of goes down, and you can see as it comes up, it's got a couple little, those are the exceptions, right? It goes down, then it starts to come up. These are the exceptions. The lowest in each group are the alkali metals. Okay, so this is just showing that as I go down a group, right, ionization energy decreases, and it's showing as I go across the periodic table from left to right, right, the ionization energy increases.